Just got here to the Homesteaders of America conference. You ready, Ben? You ready to go meet our friends? Oh, it's a little piggy. <laughs> and a farmer. This is this is this is a shelf stable. It sits on this prosciutto stand. You know, it's like you want to eat a little bit. It's so rewarding. That almost doesn't make sense. Yeah. Just ran into some sweet folks here, and I want them to say hi. I'll get down though. <laughs> so will you tell everybody who you are? Go ahead, man. Uh, we are Pratt Family Homestead. I'm Jenny. Mike is totally backwards. That's not it how is. I know. He usually <laughs> says everything. <laughs> this is weird. But we're out of southern, southern Michigan. <laughs> We've got uh -oh, 10 acres. photo bomb. Ah! <laughs> As he keeps going. Uh, we got 10 acres. We raise pigs, goats, chickens, ducks. What else do we do? Horse. Yes, we have a horse. <laughs> yeah, we're into canning, all that stuff. Um, we're still new. We are not a how-to channel. I tell everybody we are not a how-to channel. We are a come watch the train wreck channel. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so I feel a lot of the time. It's a channel to check out. Also, I'm going to be hollering at them whenever we get our pigs because they have taught me a lot already <laughs> about keeping pigs. They're a good resource for that. So y'all definitely check out the Pratt family. They're super sweet. See what worked. See what didn't work. Um, get your seeds now. Don't wait to decide what you're going to grow. Take that time to do research. I always say the winter months is God's way of letting us know that uh, there, this is the learning period and the acting period. Ben is digging worms up. Here at the conference, he asked me, where do you want me to put it? I'm like, honey, I only have a garden at home. <laughs> I got a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get your face painted? Yeah. So we're here with Kelly and Tracy and they have just started their YouTube channel. It's called Micro Farm Starter and I will link it below. And they're here from Kentucky and doing some face painting. So my kids are super excited to be getting their face painted. If you guys want to go check out their channel, they're working on a little collaboration of people here at the conference where they're um, asking people what they consider before starting a project. So they've asked a lot of really cool YouTubers that question. So you want to go check out their channel, I'll put the link below. Cool! You like it? Okay, like you are a coyote. I'm done? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> My turn. Okay, so I'm here now with Jake from White House on the Hill. Um, and I wanted to take a second, have him say hello and tell you a little bit about his family and their channel. Hi guys. Uh, we are in Northwest Missouri. We're a family of four. Uh, we raise chickens, ducks, turkeys. We've got some pea chicks. We've got rabbits and cats. And uh, we're just really... Uh, our story is that we moved out of the city and we started over in the country about three years ago and now our goal is to grow our own food. We're just starting out with uh, raised bed gardens, uh, growing our own meat chickens, meat turkeys, and just figuring out ways to start on the homesteading journey to start to be sustainable. Uh, on our channel we show just what we're doing on a daily basis and try to share uh, the fun of growing, uh, of raising a growing family. Yep. I actually found White House on the Hill last year when you guys did the um, the part where you featured different channels. It was around the end of the year, like the best video of the year, do you remember? Yes, the best video, best homestead videos of 2017. We're gonna do it again this year, so if you're here on the Roots and Refuge channel, make sure you pick out your favorite Roots and Refuge <laughs> video and nominate that. That'll be up sometime in December, so we'll, we'll get some nominations for awesome. videos for this year. I love that you guys do so much to promote other channels. I think that that's amazing. I think there needs to be more of that. We should promote each other. It's very important. channel 
too, actually. It was it was really exciting getting to meet you because um, whenever you come to these things, I didn't know who I was going to see. I knew I was going to see a lot of people that had YouTube channels, but you know, I saw you guys and I was just, I, I felt like I knew you guys before I, you know what I mean, before I even got to actually meet you, which is, is fun. That's so amazing. That makes me so excited and happy. I love your talk this morning. Now, I know we don't really have a lot of time to go into it. He gave an amazing talk about autopilot gardening. So just real quick, can you kind of give one major tip on autopilot gardening for our viewers? So my biggest tip with autopilot gardening is you should never be work you should never be working for your plants. They should be working for you. Um, if you're working for your plants, you're spending energy in areas that you could be spending elsewhere, like spending time with family. For us, family is the most important thing. And anytime I'm spending time in the garden. Sure, we might be together as a family, but it's like work. You know what I mean? If you're weeding or watering, it's like it's it's. Well, you guys probably know it's it's rigorous work. So you can't really connect on an emotional level like you can playing board games or right. heck, just have, going out and having a picnic. And as much as I like being out in the garden, I enjoy family a whole lot more. So just try to reduce your your workload and find ways that your garden can work for you rather than you work for it. Right, and I know he talks about a lot of the stuff on your channel. Do you have like, do you have any specific videos you would direct people to? I've just started delving into more promoting this, this idea of autopilot gardening. I haven't gotten all my videos out yet on this, but slowly we're getting these, these kind of videos awesome. added where, I mean, you can see them. We talk about uh, mulching, we talk about raised beds, we talk about high intensity gardening. That's one of the big ones that really kind of covers so many different topics. Um, high intensity gardening, we talk about uh, soil prep and soil conditioning um, to get the soil to where it needs to be right. so that so that your, your plants are working for you rather than you work for it. Like I said, there's so many videos that we have and all of them touch in some way or another yeah. on it um, that I can't really pinpoint exactly. Yeah. But we do we do cover it uh, very well in all of our videos. And at, if you're gonna be if he's gonna be bringing more stuff out soon, make sure you are subscribed. This is such a good topic. Today I heard a concept which I actually have been doing this, but I've never heard the terminology for it before. But the mo the thing that you said that really struck me is that a farm should be an upscaled home garden instead of home gardens being a downscaled large farm. Absolutely. And, and so will you talk about on center spacing? So on center spacing is basically the term that like a lot of people do on center spacing but many don't even know there's a term yeah. for it so when you see on the back of your packets that say let's say a tomato needs to be spaced three feet apart many people will space three foot and three foot that's six feet total spacing between plants and you'd be shocked at how many people uh, and, and me included, when I first started gardening, I prescribed that type of spacing and how unproductive my garden was and how much bare space was left for weed seeds to germinate. But by simply planting on center, uh, I turned that, that three feet into a foot and a half on one side and a foot and a half on the other. So my plants are a foot and a half apart, but you add both of those up, you're still getting the adequate spacing for that plant to have good airflow and, okay. and not be competing for those nutrients and water. Um, so they end up still doing better than, um, than giving them so much space. Because sometimes you give them so much space and that leaves room for those competition, your competition from weeds and, yeah. and things like that. Um, as well as the sun, you know, baking the soil and ruining the soil biology that soil was intended to be covered. Absolutely. And so I'd much rather, instead of covering it with mulch, I'd rather cover it with plants. Awesome, that's so, so good. I loved that. I loved hearing that. It just was a click moment for me. Yeah. Okay, so last question, what? Three tomatoes must I grow next year? I know you are you love growing tomatoes. Oh boy, do I ever! It's my favorite. So, what three tomatoes must I grow next year? So, for paste, it's got to be. It's called opalca. Um, it is a, a long, slender. It looks almost like. Have you heard of a Jersey Devil? Yes. So it's like a Jersey Devil, but way sweeter and way meatier. Um, the opalca is my number one. The uh, the Japanese black trifle is uh, like a salad tomato, fresh eating tomato. It actually won best tasting tomato two years in a row. I don't know from who, but it did. And, it's, and I, I would I would say it's probably one of the better tasting tomatoes for fresh eating. And then uh, my all time favorite, just grab and go snack, is sweetie tomato. 
So sweetie tomatoes are just super productive. Sweetie's actually the only really one of those I have yeah, grown. Really so, small, yeah. so you know, yeah. Yeah, and it's amazing, it really And is. it goes from the moment you plant it, it starts flowering the soonest, and it ends the latest. Yeah, so it produces all season long. Too. It, grew, it grew, outgrew everything. Well, that's awesome. I actually bought opaca seeds from you. <laughs> so those will be in my garden next year. I'll have to get the cool. black trifle. So yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so I much. Appreciate it. I really appreciate you bringing me on your channel. Yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> What do you think, Viv? Am I flossing? <laughs> oh, where do you find these friends? <laughs> You're not this is the trip. Ben, the internet. I found them on the internet. <laughs> Ethan from 180 degrees from average. I'm ducking. How you doing? Yeah, I know all the all the men are having to like get down and be in my camera because well, I've been hanging out with Ethan today. Jeremiah's found a fellow. Nerd. Nerdy. <laughs> yeah. We're nerds for sure. Yeah, and so they have a really awesome channel, one uh, that I really love to watch. So if you guys have not followed them yet, definitely go check them out. I'll link them below. Will you tell us a little bit about you guys? Yeah, sure. So my wife and I uh, bought the farm for my family that's been in my family for 120 years. And we bought it, and we're basically just starting homesteading. We started a little over a year ago, and it's just uh, following the progress of us getting a garden going and uh, fixing up old houses and doing all sorts of cool stuff like that. Awesome. Definitely go give them a follow. You guys have been hearing a little bit about my upcoming pigs and I want to introduce you to the inspiration for the breed that we chose to get. My name is Kaylee and I have the farm on Quail Hollow and we are kind of the smorgasbord of farms. So we have a, our little saying is we do from bees to bacon and all that's in between and um, we breed and raise a specialty breed called the Mangalista. It was almost extinct in the 1990s but we fell in love with the breed because one they're wooly and two the meat is unlike anything that you can get from the store. So it's a red meat, very marble, and uh, it's very delicious and well worth it. So here Kaylee's going to show us, this is the Mangalitsa pork meat. Look at that. That is wild. That doesn't even look like pork. Yep, this is the benefit of the of the Mangalitsa. They are considered a large pig. Um, you will probably never hear people talk about marbling when it comes to your pork. Um, but this is why we raise this pig. Yeah. I told my husband that if I'm going to be a pig farmer, I'm going to raise the fanciest pig I <laughs> possibly raise. Um, so, you know, we want red meat. We want marbled. Um, I use, you can make lotions with their fat. Wow. Um, it, you know, it's just, it's amazing. We've had a lot of chefs come out and Look purchase at that. quite a bit. It's beautiful. But, you know, this is the, the benefit of raising a breed based on their meat quality. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Oh, you're, you just, did you just start a YouTube channel? Did I? I did. You did, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to link below to Kaylee's channel on YouTube and she's also on Instagram, the Farmer Quell Hollow, and I will link that as well so y'all make sure that you check them out because they're doing a really amazing thing. Thank you. It has been a really incredible experience to get to come here and meet so many amazing people that inspire us every day and also so many of the people that support us and our channel and what we're doing. Um, I've been able to put the faces to many of the commenters that I regularly see their names encouraging me on my videos, which is absolutely awesome. You know, you live a life that is contrary to what is mainstream and normal, and it's easy to sometimes feel like you're the only one. And so coming to things like this is just really incredible to have so many like-minded people in the same place. I just absolutely love it. It's so encouraging. It's also just really awesome to come together as a community and, and you know build friendships, build relationships. I think relationships are just so incredibly important across the board. So we have really enjoyed being here. I'm glad that we brought our kids. It, was, it made it harder. It made the travel harder. It's made being here a little harder. It's made vlogging a little bit harder. But I'm glad for them to get to see 
that we're not the only ones. I'm glad for them to get to see, uh, you know, the fruit of our efforts in YouTube and to get to meet so many of the people that follow us. It's just really, really cool um, as a parent for your child to get to witness that. And also to see other people who are just as passionate about the lifestyle that you've chosen to live as you are. So we are leaving here. Um, the conference is over here in just about an hour and a half. We're gonna hang out with some people this evening, which will be cool. And then tomorrow we are leaving uh, to head home, but we're not gonna get home till late Monday night because we're making a couple of pit stops on the way with some friends down in North Carolina that I'm really excited about. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you for uh, just being, I tell people all the time that I really do think that our subscribers are the best people in the whole world. <laughs> and I really mean it. You guys are just so incredibly encouraging. Uh, and kind and I I don't think there are words enough to express how thankful I am for all of you however um, you, the way that I feel by your encouragement is, is what really largely fuels me to keep doing this and the work that goes into doing a YouTube channel I just am so thankful for you and I, I, I wish I could give you the world but I give you this YouTube channel instead so thank you all so much um, and I hope you enjoyed the Homesteaders of America conference from my eyes. I bless you. Until next time. My kids are completely wiped out.